Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Explode Your Expert Business Show. Simone Vincenzi here, your host, and this is the show for coaches, speakers, and trainers who want to grow their businesses by making an impact in the world. Uh, we're live, and uh, we are delivering you episodes uh, a few times a week. Sometimes uh, we have a solo episode where I share some of the behind the scenes on how we grow GTEx. Sometimes we showcase a client uh, and uh, share how they got some incredible results and so we can learn from them. And sometimes we have uh, incredible guests like today to talk about their journeys or some of the strategies that they use to grow their coaching and speaking businesses. So that's the case. We are going to have a special guest. But before we get started, and I introduce our exclusive guest for today. I want to remind you about uh, our uh, business checklist. Uh, you know, running a coaching and speaking business can be very confusing. There's too much to do. Someone tells you to do webinars. Someone tells you to do Facebook ads. Someone tells you to do YouTube. Someone tells you to do podcast. And then you get confused. It's not that all these strategies, they're not working. It's that we need to find our lane. I need to find a strategy that really works for us. And that's what the, this, our expert business checklist will help you with. It's a full assessment where you can see where you're at, what you should be focusing on based on the level of your business, and it will give you also next steps uh, to do, okay, if you're here, this is what you should be focusing on and spend your time and attention. So if you want to get the clarity that you deserve to grow your business faster, uh, make sure you check the show notes and get our expert business checklist. So you can scroll down, find it in the show notes or in the comments uh, here in the description and get our expert business checklist. Also, if you have been listening to the show before, um, then and you're coming back, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any other episode or leave us a review. They're really important for the show in case in particular, if you like this episode. Having said that, it is time to introduce our guest for today. He works as a personal coach and he helps people to remember what is truly important to them in life. He's also a trainer of new coaches, a group supervisor, a mentor, a speaker, and a panel host. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Marcus Stone. Welcome Marcus to the show. How are you doing today? Marcus, you're muted. Yeah, I'm muted. The professional <laughs> trainer doesn't even know when he's muted. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, Simone, it's a, a pleasure to be here. I'm very well, thank you, and delighted to be here. And whenever I look at you on my screen, I can't help smile. There's something about you that just makes me smile. So. Um, that, that's what my, my wife said as well. I looked at you and I started <laughs> laughing. <laughs> I don't, uh, <laughs> I, well, that wasn't quite what I meant. But anyway. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> moving on, moving on, Marcus. Yeah. Uh, today, uh, we are going to talk about your journey and uh, how you, became, from a professional surveyor, you decided to start mm -hmm. your coaching business. And I would love to get started with uh, where did this passion for coaching started? Where did, where did you get this fire in your belly that said, this is what I'm going mm -hmm. to do. I'm going to leave my career reinvent myself and become a coach? Um, well, it's something that I've been looking for for a long time, to be honest. Um, and I, I just didn't know what it was. So it was more it was more moving away from somewhere else and then being pulled to something. Yeah, it was a, a fire in the belly or a, a feeling of excitement in the heart that when I discovered it. But I'd spend a, a long 30-year career, as you said, in as a professional surveyor. So that was my first profession went through university uh, or polytechnic in the UK as it was, uh, qualified as a child surveyor, went to London, and then 30 years later, I sort of um, didn't really know what I was doing. And I spent a lot of that time unfulfilled, unhappy in my career, not understanding the purpose of the work that I was doing. I was, I was reasonably successful at it, but I wasn't happy. So spent a lot of that time looking outside myself, trying to find this thing that I, I knew this thing existed. Um, and just kept getting knocked back, not able to find the thing that I was looking for. Um, and actually, it was a process, um, a slightly um, unexpected process, I think, of meeting people, talking to people that unlocked something within me. Um, and 
my it wasn't me finding coaching as such and thinking oh that would be a great thing to do it's it's almost like coaching found me it was when I took the time to uh, rediscover myself uh, to remember who I was and what felt important to me in life and to acknowledge to, to come out of quite a harsh commercial environment where I think I'd pushed away a lot of those things that were important to me when I was younger and pushed any emotions down as well this kind of opening up and reconnecting in, in some way allowed me to understand what was more important to me such that when coaching came along as a possibility this thing just it was like a cork coming out of a bottle when I connected with it and when I started talking to people about possibilities and what it was I just I was just it wouldn't have matter what what people said to I'm, me I'm this is something I had to follow I'm curious because I remember when, when you said it was almost life coaching found me uh, I remember mm. that uh, it happened very similar as well in my situation where uh, I it was a person who recommended is uh, and he said you know what it's important that you grow personally and why don't you read this book so go into this blog post and then they recommended me to attend some events so I think right. I signed up on meetup and that's how I started uh, right. attending my first few events of personal development and I remember that it was uh, one day, it was a particular training that I was attending. I think it was about my third or fourth seminar that I was attending. Yeah. And inside my, in my heart, I felt that's it. That's what I want to do. I mm. didn't know what that was. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it was, like, was a speaker there. He was coaching, he was speaking, but it, I had no doubt that that's what I wanted to do. I didn't know what it was, but I could feel it. And I knew yeah. that I had to follow it. When, when was the catalyst for you? When was the moment for you that uh, um, you said, this is, this is it? Well, I, I mean, there were the two or three moments, I think. Um, and the first one was, I didn't really know it at the time, but I'd, I'd been through this weird process of reconnecting with myself. And I'd spent a day where suddenly things started happening for me. I've been asking myself this question, which somebody else asked me, what is it that you love about life, which I just hadn't been able to properly answer. And suddenly this one day I took some time out of work um, and just went for a walk and all of these answers started flooding into my head. And it was that same day when I had this list of things that felt important to me, which weren't big things. They weren't changing the world. It was, um, you know, walking in the mountains with my father and coming down in the sunshine and grabbing a beer at the bar. It was sitting outside with friends outside a coffee shop talking. It was things like that. And I'd written in the middle of that um, empathy um, and listening to people. Um, and I got on the train that night and I grabbed an evening standard and I opened it up to the back pages and it was all of the classified ads there. And there was this advertisement for life coaching and it just mm -hmm. literally jumped off the page. Now, I don't know why that was because I didn't know what life coaching was at that stage, but it got into my head and I couldn't ignore it. Um, and in the end, I did a bit of research and I thought, you know what, this, I don't know why I'm just going to ring the number. And I rang the number and I went to um, a discovery day, as it was called then, for this company that was offering life coaching training. And that was the real moment for me. I spent a day uh, with a smallish group of people and the, the founder of this training school talking about coaching. And oh, my God, something just was like uh, I, I felt part of something I felt this was something that felt really important to me that we, we could help other people to create change in their lives and that felt really important to me it felt yeah. like there was something in there for me personally as well I didn't know whether I'd ever be a coach at that stage and the fact that my voice seemed to count in the space along with everybody else's I was I was um, you know not discounted but I was listened to in the space it just turned on something in me and that was the moment I think where I thought well I well that when I decided to train as a coach yeah 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 and and what was the the biggest thing that coaching did for you personally and I'm looking for something specific that coaching oh. helped you with and then I'll, I'll share mine gosh specific I mean that that's quite hard because it, it was so transformative for me in my life um I mean, for my, for my, okay, okay, here's something specific, 
perfect then, which was a consequence of becoming a coach and changing my whole life and moving away from the stresses and strains of my previous life towards something that I really enjoyed and gave me more flexibility and freedom was a, a I've got ulcerative colitis, which is a, I think for me, it was a stress related condition that caused me quite a lot of issues at one point. And when I found coaching and I changed the way I lived my life and I took that stress out of my life, my ulcerative colitis completely disappeared. And I haven't had a flare up for about five years now. And I put that down to my change of lifestyle, discovering coaching. So that's a slightly odd one, but that's what came into my mind. It's very, it's very, it's very practical and very specific. And that's what I like because sometimes there are a lot of intangible things then intangible mm. results and benefits that we get by being coached, by being mentored, by the people that we work with. That's a, yeah. the, what I like is something practical. And I remember uh, for me, the, one of the biggest catalysts was rekindling a conversation, a, a, a relationship with my mom. Uh, when I moved to the UK, my mom and I fell out and we didn't about speak for about three years. And uh, it was after the coaching training that I've learned about communications, that I've mm. learned about the importance of, uh, you know, letting things go and uh, forgiveness uh, and asking for forgiveness uh, that things actually, that our relationship and our dynamic completely change. And I was ready mm. to have that conversation to restart that relationship. It didn't happen overnight. We had to work for it and we had to work through it. But now we're in a, in, a, in a great place and that uh, I can attribute to specific training, specific coaching. Right. That I've done. So, oh, that's incredible, isn't it? I mean, that's a, what, how fantastic is that? It is. Um, it is. And, you know, for, for me, it's like if, 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 if it was just that or something like that, that would be enough. And, and for me, just having found something that feels worthwhile and fulfilling, uh, that I'm happy doing, that I love doing, it's like, I never thought I'd find that in my life. And actually, I thought I was getting a bit old to be changing my career, completely redesigning my life and my career. And I thought it was probably never going to happen for me. Hmm. Um, let's let's a, talk about that. Let's yeah. talk about that. Sorry if I interrupt you there, because That's uh, okay. I think uh, um, I know that there are going to be a lot of people listening to the show that uh, they want to either change because uh, they've already done, a have already run a coaching business Mm -hmm. But now they want to change the way they run it or they want to change their niche or people that they want to get into coaching, they're going to want get into speaking, uh, consulting, mentoring, but they feel it's too late. I'm, I got another career. This is a new career. So what would you say from your own personal perspective? Um, actually, now before that, how did you navigate that whole process first? And then we go, what did you say? <laughs> Probably yeah. not brilliantly, if I'm <laughs> honest. <laughs> if you ask my wife, she'll say that it was a terrible time um, where I suddenly, you know, had discovered this thing that was really important to me and was prepared, literally prepared to rip my working life up. And bear in mind, I was a director in a property company at this time, you know, doing reasonably well. My wife felt we had a sort of stable, secure life. So the transition could have been quite difficult. Um, the thing that worked in my favor, I think, was that I, I ended up more through chance than judgment, not throwing away everything that went before. And so, you know, we talk about this transition. Actually, what, what happened for me was I did give up my directorship in the property company before I'd qualified as a coach. That was mad enough. Mm. But I managed to negotiate a consultancy with the company that kept me involved with them for a period and gave me a, a reducing financial position over a period of time. So that I think one of the biggest things that helped me was that gradual transition that allowed me almost to play with the changes and my coaching career without it being, I think if I, if that had been the, the financial thing for me, I'd have put a lot of pressure on myself at the start and that would have been counterproductive for me. And I think that the, what, I, what it allowed me to do was to go out and, and enjoy my coaching and work with people and say, yes, I had a lot of people asking me to do things. And I said, yes, because I really wanted to do it. And I didn't worry about where that was going to take me. Um, and so I, I was quite generous with my time. 
and I enjoyed it. So I went for things that pulled me, that I was excited by, which yeah. had, which was a completely different thing for me at that time in my life. I'd always felt duty bound that I should be doing things up to then. Here, I started to go for things that pulled me towards them that I felt really excited by. Um, so I had a lot of fun, but in the background, I think what was happening there for me was that I was putting myself out there and moving towards things that would be fulfilling and rewarding for me over time. Um, I didn't know that at the time. I, this idea that it's going to be mm -hmm. too late, I, I started looking at it, it. For me, it was about, well, what regrets am I likely to have later in life if I don't? do something if I never find this thing that's going to light me up how much am I going to regret that um, and if I don't make this change now when I've got this opportunity staring me in the face if I don't say yes to it and it's pulling me what is stopping me from doing that because I think that's something I might regret later in life so uh, for me it's partly about avoiding the possibility of deathbed regrets um. <laughs> and what would you say if someone said to you that it is someone that is uh, in right now in the same situation that you were then when you make that decision. Uh, I I would I would say what um, follow, follow okay for me it was my heart it's like follow your heart find find the stillness within you find give yourself time to find the stillness within you take some time to actually be still and allow what's inside you to talk because that's what happened for me. I stilled everything that went on around me and, get, and gave myself, um, I invested time in myself to sit and do nothing. And the, the inner voice for me started to emerge at that, that moment. And I started yeah. listening to that and moving towards what that was telling me rather than listening to everything that was going on around me. So find find what feels really important to you and that may be something you didn't know before but often it's a remembering i think of something that you knew reconnect with that ask what that tells you and then if that has something to say to you there may well be bravery involved at that stage it's like mm -hmm. what do i do here because i feel this is right but everything around me practically would be saying that's a you know that might not be the right thing to do how do i how do i deal with that conflict um, and for me, it was just, I, I think it was easy for me because it had been taking me so long to get to this point. Yeah. Yeah. That I was, I was so ready for change, um, that I couldn't ignore it. And I just went for it. Uh, it's, it's fascinating. Uh, the, um, uh, there are two things that you mentioned. One is uh, the living with no regret and understanding and really asking us uh, ourselves, Am I going to regret not making this choice? And, you know, sometimes there are choices that we, re we want to make, but we are not going to really regret them if we don't make them. But mm -hmm. others, that if we don't give it our best shot, then we will, I, we could die with having, but what if I did that? How would have things turned out? Mm -hmm. But also there is another thing that you mentioned is about when, like, is the, the bravery of being true to your own decisions when you have everyone else around you or situations around you saying, ah, that's actually not the right thing to do or yeah. that's stupid. Why are you leaving this for something else that you don't know? And in particular, when you have responsibilities, in particular, when you have a family, in particular, when you have other people that are dependent on you. And in fact, yeah. I, that's what I want to ask. You mentioned... Mm. Uh, that it, your, your wife was like, hey, wait, wait, wait a moment. <laughs> what are you doing here? Yeah. How was, uh, how were those conversations and how did you manage to find a, a common ground where she um, could have yeah. this, where she had her needs met and you had yours met at the same time? Yeah, I think um, it took time, actually. And uh, to be honest, Simone, we went through um, a bit of a tricky patch. And I, so, and, and the conflict at the time was, I have finally found something that feels important to me. If that happened to you, I would support you 
whatever it took for you to follow that dream, all I'm looking for you to do is to support me mm -hmm. and just accept what I do. And I, I, I was rather um, puritanical. I was almost, uh, you know, I had this oh about me, which didn't help the situation at all. From my wife's perspective, she saw this person who'd, you know, been a, a steady professional surveyor for 30 years, always helped to provide for the family. And she knew who I was and what I did. And suddenly, it looked like I was completely changing. And I started mm -hmm. talking in a different way, acting in a different way. Um, and, and so it was very unsettling for her. And it took me a while to realize that this was my change that was happening here and that I had to make that okay. And I, I, I did feel hurt myself. Um, mm -hmm. that, that, um, and I had to get over that. I had to put myself into, which we know as coaches, is like put myself into my wife's shoes see the situation from her perspective and understand how why she was reacting the way that she did and how she was feeling about the situation and just calm down and so then have some conversations with her to explain my side about what was happening and calm the whole thing down um and to take that that sort of i had a need to justify myself mm -hmm. um and, you know, you talked there about a lot of people around us saying, oh, why are you doing that? You can't do that. And all this. I had a lot of that. And I think when you make a big change like that, um, you probably will get a lot of people around you, probably with the best intentions, trying to yeah. keep you safe. But for me at the time, because I think I was uncertain about it, I reacted quite strongly whenever I felt that because it just raised fears in me about what I was doing and insecurity. And I had no idea if I could be a coach, if I was going to give, make this anything. I, you know, the chances were I might be just mad. Um, and so I think, I think I had to take a step back and coaching helped with that. You know, the coach training helped me to look at my own situation and yeah. think, okay, what would I be, what would I be saying to a client here? How would I be helping a client? in this situation with this relationship and why am i not having those conversations with my wife that, that's a that's a very uh, thank you for being very honest and uh, and open about about the situation because these are real live conversation that are happening in many households <laughs> mm. <laughs> for people that make those decisions um, mm. i remember uh, when uh, <laughs> It's like at the beginning, no one, because I got introduced to coaching very early. Uh, fortunately, I was uh, I was twenty years old, um, twenty twenty two years old, when I when I took my coaching qualifications, and going to explain to my waiter and waitresses friends what coaching was <laughs> was two word apart, and I remember mm. that. Uh, uh, the re there was a one piece of advice that I've been given uh, from a friend of mine in that situation. And it was uh, not everyone needs to be aware about your dreams because uh, there are moments where, advice. yeah, there are moments where, you know, it, it always, I uh, think that there is a, this part of the coaching industry that say you got to commit, you got to say your goals out loud, you got to put yourself out there. So then it becomes a reality. But it, mm. what a lot of time doesn't say is that if we are, if we are not certain in our decision, because it's the early stage of a decision, yeah, we are building something on a very shaky ground. Yeah. And it, we are very fragile. Our dream is like a little fragile thing that Absolutely. we are starting nurturing. And when someone comes and crushes it down and crushes it down, <laughs> it, it hurts. Yeah. It hurts. And I get, even now, when I have something new that I'm working on, I only have a few um, selected right. amount of people that I'm talking to. But the problem is that advice. when... The problem is that when when we there are the people that we need our support, like our partners, <laughs> and they involuntarily crush our dreams. And yeah, sometimes yeah, they have a, they have their reasons, though. <laughs> I I know, but they're also really good at it, aren't they? Because they know you so well, they're likely to say the thing that's going to hurt the most, um, Th they and are. not you know not deliberately. And I and so I it's it's really interesting that what you say there because I. I don't hold things back from my wife now, um, but I, I will talk about certain things. I might not talk about others because they don't need to be talked about at mm -hmm. this moment in time. And also I know I have to, I have to 
talk to my wife when I'm comfortable and confident with what I'm doing. Um, and and the, those people, it's like when I'm ready, yeah, I'll I'll share this because then I, it doesn't matter what you say, and I'll be able to discuss it calmly. I think it's something around calmness. It's like you know we get triggered and we fly off the handle. It, it doesn't help situations. The other thing, I mean, I think that's a really good piece of advice. The the other thing that I often think is that nothing has to happen now. So in relationships that we have with people, if we have an argument or a discussion with them about it. So that's all it has to be. They're just words. So nothing actually has mm. to happen now. Let's have a discussion about this. Let's be rational about this and see what we can take from this situation. And I think it's the same with um, like business dreams and things as well. It's like that encourage people to just dream about these things. Really think about what it is that you might want to do because nothing actually has to happen unless you decide then to move forward and take committed action around it. And there's always choices at every step of the place you go. Mm -hmm. Just because you do one thing and make a decision to do something doesn't mean that that excludes anything else or everything else and that that's what you're going to do and move forward. At each step of the way, you have choice about what you're going to do. And I think I was always a very black and white thinker. It had right. to be either this or that. And there was nothing in between. Um, and coaching actually and being coached myself helped me to see that there's a lot of things that lie in between mm -hmm. the two things that you might have as extremes in your mind um, and so it doesn't just have to be this new thing or the old thing yeah there's lots of other things mm -hmm. that can happen as I, well. I like I like what you mentioned about uh, when we have conversation it doesn't have to happen now it can mm. be a conversation and I think that sometimes the people phases conversation looking for an immediate resolution instead of having a conversation what just with the intent of exploring yeah. and listening and it requires a lot of emotional self-awareness it is a two-way conversation is also to have another part <laughs> the other person that is willing to have that but yeah. i remember like the, some of the conversation that i have with my wife where we are exploring things and uh, I'm, I'm way more impulsive normally uh, while my wife is more calculated. And um, so I remember even when I said, uh, when I wanted to propose, I started saying a year before I'm going to propose. <laughs> <laughs> just, because, just because I didn't know if she would have probably reacted if she wasn't prepared. <laughs> <laughs> or she hasn't internalized how she would have reacted to it. That's right. just a small thing. Or we want yeah. to move country. We start talking maybe like a six months or a year before, because if it was for me, I'm the kind of person I can drop everything on a moment and go out there. Mm. My wife is different. And right. thanks God we are together yeah, <laughs> because yeah, we can yeah. balance each other really well. But at the same time, we can also drive each other nuts incredibly well. Yeah. And Having those, the awareness and I think the coaching tool gives you this, the, the, the tools to have this conversation. Um, but as a final wrap up for this particular thought, I want to recommend everyone, make sure that uh, you build also a sense of internal confidence and you have people that are going to support you that really yeah. have your back, in particular at the beginning because you need them because there might be a lot of other people that might be the closest people to you, not because they want they don't love you, but because they love you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They, and they want to keep you safe. They want to keep and, you safe. Mm -hmm. And they also look at their own lives and they, they think, oh, I, I don't think I could do that. Um, and then that tends to come out as, you know, are you sure that you should be doing this? Um, is this the right thing for you? I, the other thing somebody said to me at the beginning of my journey, which I, I'm glad I took note of, was that when you start your own change, things shift around you. Uh, it's like people that you've, you've been friends with or been colleagues with mm -hmm. when you start to change that starts to shift it's almost like planets around you some will move off but others will come in um, and i yeah. think your point around um you know finding people around you that are going to be supportive is a really important thing but you know one of the things i love about life is that you you don't know yet who you haven't met who have you not met yet that is going to have mm. a significant positive impact in your life because they're there, they're waiting, and you will. And I think what an amazing thing. It's like, when will I meet the next person who's going to have a positive impact in my life? And what a wonderful, exciting thing that is. No, I want everyone to hold this thought right now. Yeah. <laughs> Just hold it for a moment. <laughs> Who will you meet next? 
who will you meet next that is going to help you um, now we're going to go uh, we are towards the end of the interview and uh, right. we are going into the lifting the veil uh, part of the interview where we ask okay. our guests to share some of their tools and or apps books something that uh, make you in this case marcus your life easier better or your business easier better that is mm -hmm. worth sharing that people need to know about uh, what is that okay for you? Um, what the, so I probably, the, so the first thing, which was a pivotal book for me when I was training to be a coach and I had lots of doubts about whether I could do it or not. And a lot of thoughts in my head, I read a book called the happiness trap by Russ Harris, um, which is around act, which is acceptance and commitment therapy. And it's, I just loved it. It was just a really compassionate book, a self-help book. Um, which really helped me at that moment to recognize that was just a thought I had. I, my thought was I'm a crap coach. That is what my mind was telling me. And you can imagine what that does to you if you've got that thought subconsciously going yeah. on. Um, really. So the, the happiness trap was, um, I loved it. It's a really easy book and it's, it's got some great stuff in there actually that's very congruent with coaching. Um, the, the other one's a slightly odd one, but you, you asked me what helps me in my life at the moment. Um, and a lot of people might've heard of this already, but I've just, I, a few months ago, signed up to get a Calendly account. So a, an appointment management system, whatever that is, I'd always done everything myself. Suddenly I discover this thing um, and I've, I've paid for a proper professional account and, and people, you know about this, but people can book, you can create all of these different times for meetings you just send a link to people and they then access through Calendly your calendar and book a time that's appropriate uh, for you. And you can manage everything around it. How many sessions you want a day, what, what buffering there is between sessions. And it links with your calendar. It also links with Zoom and creates a Zoom meeting just like that. You don't have to do anything. Whenever anybody wants to meet you, send them the link, forget about it. And it's just go. brilliant. It saved me so much saves time. Saves hours. Saves yeah. hours of back and forth. I highly recommend the Calendly or another system that use Calendly. I know that is very mm. easy to start with. You have, the, you have a free account. You can create a professional account. And if uh, you said, oh, probably like many people might have heard of it, but I still know and we work with hundreds of clients and I know always that when we mention, hey, do you have an automated calendar scheduling system? Even if they know of the existence of these tools, they might not have one. Right. And right. if there is one thing that you can do right now, sign up for a Calendly account just... and get, get it. This is not an affiliate link. It's not sponsored. It's something. No, 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 no. God our no. guests share. <laughs> right. Uh, because it makes their life or business easier. I, it's, 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 I love it. It's completely changed how I interact with clients and get them to book. Um, and if you, you, you end you pay for it, you can, you can personalize it and, and all of that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, it just works really well for me, but, but there are other systems out there. We should say yes. All right. All right. Thank you, Marcus. <laughs> so now it is time to wrap up the interview. Uh, if someone wants to reach out to you, uh, what's the best way? Okay, well, I mean, you can find my website, which is just marcusstone.com, uh, nice and simple. Um, you can email me direct as well, which is marcus at marcusstone.com, nice and simple. Um, those are probably the easiest ways to get hold of me, to be honest. Um, yeah. All right, that's brilliant. So uh, marcus at marcusstone.com. Uh, you will also have the links in the show notes. Uh, so if you scroll down, you will see all the contact details where you can reach out to Marcus and let him know uh, what you enjoyed about this interview. What yeah, was some of your biggest takeaway? Um, I'm from, also on Facebook and LinkedIn as well. So, you know, people can find me there. Yeah, we'll put all the links in the show notes so people Fantastic. can connect with you. Uh, now, last question for you, Marcus. Mm. If uh, uh, you were to leave us with a final message, uh, what would your final message be after this interview? I, I think I'd repeat that thing. The thing that really transformed my life was consciously taking time for myself each day just to stop, even if just for 15 or 20 minutes and stop. Um, and I guess it was a kind of mindfulness. And out of that, I discovered what was important, rediscovered what was important to me. Um, it's give yourself be generous with yourself, you know, give yourself the gift 
um, stop rushing around worrying about what other people think all the time. This is this is it. You know, we get one chance um, and those regrets. It's like, don't don't have a regret that you never stopped and took time for yourself to, and took time to find out what's really important to you. This is it. This is it. Let's do it. You know, get on with it, guys. You're not going to get another chance. At least I don't think so. And, and on this note, this is it. There is no other chance. So subscribe right now to the podcast okay. and I will see you. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus, for Brilliant. being with us today. Oh, uh, pleasure, Simone. Thanks so much for inviting me. It's been great. Uh, you're welcome. And ladies and gentlemen, I will see you next time on another episode of Explode Your Expert Business Show. And until next time, remember that together we grow exponentially. Ciao.